today I am exploring the the furthest western part of Oklahoma known as the Oklahoma Panhandle and a long time ago known as no man's land and the reason was is because it didn't used to always be part of Oklahoma and before Oklahoma kind of became a territory and a state it had it, it belonged to no one it was just um, literally no man's land and so there were no laws there were hardly any you know authorities for uh, keeping trouble from happening and so it was a very uh, much of an outlaw place This is the furthest by far settlement in the western part of the Panhandle. In fact, we're only two miles uh, from New Mexico this way and five miles from Colorado that way. Um, so it's a gorgeous area. It's uh, right near Black Mesa, which is the highest point in Oklahoma, which is around 5,000 feet. Um, but the drive in is beautiful. This little this little town or used to used to be a town is surrounded by a very beautiful area and um, has a it's a very unique place um, there are, there are a lot of awesome old buildings here like the one behind me this was a courthouse actually when when um, hey there's a dog barking at me this was a courthouse when Oklahoma first became a state and this was the county seat of this county and then shortly thereafter, they moved the county seat. But this building behind me in the early 1900s served as a courthouse. But also what's very interesting about, they're so far west and they really aren't, it's not really associated with Oklahoma very much that they are in the mountain time zone here in the town, even though it's officially in the central time zone, they work on the mountain time zone because they pretty much associate with the people and do business with people in the mountain time zone. I'm standing in what I think is close to the notorious ghost town called Beer City, Oklahoma. And this place epitomizes what no man's land in, in some ways was all about. We are just south of the Kansas border. It's right behind me, just a couple miles. And because there's no, there were no laws and no rules here in no man's land, people come down from liberal Kansas, which is right up this road, and uh, party the night away in a, in a place called Beer City. You can imagine the type of businesses it was filled with. It was a bunch of bars and saloons and brothels and uh, just a, a place of ill repute because people could come and do anything they wanted with no repercussions. And uh, to imagine something like that is pretty wild. Um, there's, a, there's a local legend uh, story that um, there was someone trying to create some some uh, law enforcement in in the town because it was such a rowdy place and um, so he kind of named himself as the officer of Beer City and they invited him the townspeople invited him to the, one of the local saloons one night and as soon as he walked in 
they all opened fire and, and killed him all at once. And when somebody asked why were there so many uh, people shot him and, and the, their, the response was so that no one knew who actually was the person that murdered the sheriff of Beer City. So <laughs> uh, probably one of the most crazy ghost towns in all of the United States here, Beer City, right here. Now there is, there is absolutely nothing left. It only lasted for two years and uh, it was probably gone very quickly. As, as soon as this part of Oklahoma became, became Oklahoma Territory and, and then eventually the state of Oklahoma uh, and, and laws were, would, would be enforced, there was no reason for the town to exist anymore. So uh, definitely, a, I guess you could say, a historic place. Um, wild times, the rowdiest of all outlaws and the craziest of things probably happened right here in Beer City, Oklahoma. Gate, Oklahoma is in the very eastern part of what was called no man's land. So it was another very rowdy place, but it was a very, very busy place. It was a very successful place. It's called Gate because it was a gateway to a bunch of ranching areas. And so it, it, uh, it got a lot more popular and, and had a population of like a thousand people at, in the early 1900s. And then just had a slow decline over the over the years, the depression, the Dust Bowl, things like that. And, and today there's only 60 people, but there's certainly a spirit in this town. <laughs> <laughs> 